This is problem one from both the AB and the BC calculus exam for that year. And our first task is to estimate W prime of 12. Well, we obviously don't have the function to work with to calculate the instantaneous rate of change at t equals 12. And so we're going to have to do our best to guesstimate. And the two relevant pieces of data we have, we know the value at t equals 9 and the value at t equals 15 of the original function. W prime of 12, we can calculate by finding the slope of that function between 9 and 15. And so we'll just write uh, 67.9 minus 61.8. And divide by 15 minus 9, and we get 6.1 over 6. Just to be on the safe side, we're going to write that as a decimal approximation. 6. And that is the rate of change of the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit per minute. Um, let's just be more explicit. That is the instantaneous rate of change. Units are degrees Fahrenheit per minute at t equals 12 of the temperature in the tub. Okay, I think that uh, handles A. Let's talk about B. We're asked to find the integral from 0 to 20 of W prime of T dt. Use correct units and interpret its meaning. Well, we're in luck because we don't have any calculating really to do here. Because Thanks to the fundamental theorem of calculus, we know that the integral of w prime of t dt is the same as just evaluating w at 20 and subtracting off w at 0. And that's straightforward enough. Uh, w at 20 was 71.0 minus w at 0 was 55.0. Uh, we'll say that that gives us um, a difference of 16.0 degrees Fahrenheit. And it asks for an explanation, and that's simply the increase in temperature, change in temperature. from, uh, uh, sorry about that, let's fix that handwriting, okay, it's the increase in temperature from t equals 0 to t equals 20 minutes. I think that suffices for B. C, we want to know the average temperature of the water in the tub. We'll use a left Riemann sum and decide whether this underestimates or overestimates. Well, we've got a left Riemann sum. And yet, we're told that the function is strictly increasing. 
meaning it is always going up as t increases. And that means that by using the leftmost side of the rectangle to approximate the average height throughout the rectangle, we are constantly underestimating the height of the rectangle. And therefore, we're constantly underestimating the total change. Or the, uh, I'm sorry, therefore, underestimating the average temperature. Okay. We'll go ahead and do that calculation. It's going to be when twentieth of uh, the height for the first rectangle is fifty five dot o. Its width is four. Height for the next rectangle fifty seven one. Its width is five. Next rectangle. 61.8, its width is 6, last rectangle 67.9, its width is 5. Uh, I did this calculation previously and got an average therefore of 60.790 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's go on to D. So they give us, and I've written it down here already just to save a moment, the W prime of T, and this is valid for T between 20 and 25, including or not including the endpoints really doesn't matter, but since they include it, we'll include it. And what we have is the need to calculate W of 25. Well, W of 25 in general, or W at any time in general, is W at some known time plus the integral from that known time up until the time in question of the derivative of W. And using a numerical estimation, we get an approximate answer Well, let's back up. We know what W of 20 is. We know that it is 71.0. OK? And it's only on this integral that we're using numerical estimation. Uh, we get 71.0 plus uh, 2.04315315. And so I get a final answer of 73.04315 degrees Fahrenheit for the temperature at time t equals 25. I don't think there's anything else left to do on this, so we'll call it at that.